Hello students, in this paper we will solve Cambridge IGCSE paper code 0625 variant 12. It is May June 2023 paper. Question number one, which single apparatus is used to find the volume of a solid cube and which single apparatus is used to find the volume of a quantity of liquid? So volume of a solid cube, cube is a regular shaped body. It means we can find the volume of a cube by using a formula. The volume of a cube is, volume of cube is side by side, side multiply by side, multiply by side. And we can measure side of a cube using ruler. The ruler will work for volume of cube. Now next, volume of a quantity of liquid. Quantity of liquid can be measured using measuring cylinder. So option D is right. The speed time graph represents the short journey. Which distance time graph represents the same journey? The given graph is between speed and time and in all the options the graph is drawn between distance and time we know that the gradient means the slope of distance time graphs gives you speed and from the given graph we can see that speed is increasing with time from option c we can see that the speed will be the gradient the slope of the graph or here the slope is zero means the speed is zero at all time and from the given graph the speed is increasing with time so option c cannot be the right answer in option d we can see that the speed is constant if you calculate the slope of the graph given in d option speed is constant speed is constant but from the given graph, we can see again, the speed is increasing with time. So D cannot be the option. In option A, speed after some time, you can see it will decrease. B is the right answer. If we calculate the gradient at any point, then the speed is constantly increasing. We can see, suppose if I want to calculate here, let's suppose at P I want to calculate the speed, then I will draw a straight line because it is a curve and calculate the gradient here. Suppose here I want to calculate the speed at point Q, then I will draw a straight line and calculate the gradient here. So at B, the given information match. B is the right answer. The graph represents the motion of a car. How far has the car moved between 0 and 5 seconds? So this is a graph between speed and time. And we know that the area under speed time graphs gives you the distance traveled by the object. So we can calculate the area between 0 and 5 seconds. So this is a form of triangle given here. And the area of triangle is 1 by 2 times base. Base is 5. This is 5. Times the height. It is 10. So this will be. 25, 25 meter. Option C is right. Question number 4. Which statement about mass or weight is not correct? Masses can be compared using a balance. Yes, correct. Mass is a force. No, incorrect. Mass is an intrinsic property of a matter. Weight is a force, but mass is not a force. So, option B is the right one because it is not correct. Weight can be compared using a balance, yes. We can compare weight using a balance. Weight is a force, yes. This is also a correct statement. So option B is right. Which two quantities must be known to determine the density of a material? Now we know the formula that density you can measure. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. So option B is right. Mass and volume. Two boys are sitting on a seesaw. The seesaw is in equilibrium and remains horizontal. What affects the movement of each boy about the pivot? So we know that what is the definition of movement if you calculate of movement of any force. So movement is equal to force times the distance of perpendicular distance of force perpendicular distance 
of force from pivot. So option D is the right one. His weight, weight means the force and the distance from the pivot. Option D is the right one. Revise the theory and then solve the paper. Number seven, a uniform meter rule is pivoted in equilibrium at the 50 centimeter mark. A mass of 25 gram is placed at the 30 centimeter mark on the rule. What is the smallest mass that can be placed on the rule to restore equilibrium? So meter rule means 100 centimeter. One meter is 100 centimeter and there is a pivot at 50 centimeter. Means this side is 50 centimeter and this side is 50 centimeter because it is at equilibrium at the midpoint where the center of gravity works because this is a uniform meter rule. Now, a mass of 25 gram is placed at 30 centimeter mark. Let's suppose this is a 30 centimeter mark and here there is a weight of 25 gram. Yeah. So, the distance of the 25 gram force from the pivot will be 20 centimeter. Now, this force is responsible for moving a uniform meter rule in anti-clockwise motion. So, anti-clockwise movement is 25 times 20, which is 500. Now, the question is, what is the smallest mass that can be placed on the rule to restore equilibrium? So, for equilibrium, anti-clockwise movement must be equal to clockwise movement. And clockwise movement means we, if we re, so this length is 500 and we want clockwise movement should be equal to 500. We have the distance 50 centimeter on the right hand side. So if I place a 10 gram here, then the anti, So if I place a 10 gram here at the other end of the meter rule, let's suppose 10 gram, then this 10 gram is responsible for moving this rule in clockwise motion. So clockwise movement must be 550 times 10, 500. In that case, 500, 500 means the anti-clockwise and clockwise movement are equal. So 10 gram is the right answer. Because we have a length of 50 centimeter on the right hand side. And if I choose 10 gram, then it will be equal to maintain a equilibrium here. A uniform beam XY is 100 centimeter long. So center of beam is here. It means this is 50 centimeter and this is 50 centimeter length. The beam rests on a pivot 60 centimeter from end X. Okay. The beam rests on a pivot 60 centimeter from end X. A load of 8 Newton hangs from the beam 10 centimeter from end X. This is a 10 Newton and this is 10 centimeter from X. The beam is kept balanced by force F acting on the beam which is 80 centimeter from the X and X. So what is the... Hmm. What is the magnitude of force F? Let's calculate. The pivot is here and this is the center of beam. Center of beam is a place where the weight of the beam is working. And the weight is giving 4 Newton. It means 4 Newton is here. Now calculate all the distances of the force from the pivot. So the distance of the 8 Newton force from the pivot is what? It is 60 minus 10. It means the distance of 8 Newton is 50 centimeter. It is 60 minus 10. So this distance is 50 centimeter. The distance of center of beam means the 4 Newton. Force from the pivot will be what? The whole distance is 50 centimeter. Means 
द सेंटर ऑफ बीम दिस डिस्टेंस सेंटर ऑफ बीम टू एक्स इट इज फिफ्टी सेंटीमीटर एंड दिस इज सिक्सटी सेंटीमीटर इट मीन सिक्सटी माइनस फिफ्टी टेन सेंटीमीटर तो द डिस्टेंस ऑफ फोर न्यूटन फोर्स फ्रॉम द पाइवोट इज टेन सेंटीमीटर नाउ द डिस्टेंस ऑफ द फोर्स एफ फ्रॉम द पाइवोट सो एट्टी माइनस सिक्सटी एटी माइनस सिक्सटी गिव यू द डिस्टेंस ऑफ फोर्स एफ फ्रॉम द पाइवोट दिस डिस्टेंस इज ट्वेंटी सेंटीमीटर नाउ वी हैव ऑल द डिस्टेंस इज एंड फोर्स एंड द बीम मस्ट बी बैलेंस्ड इट मीन्स एंटी क्लॉक वाइज मूवमेंट मस्ट बी इक्वल टू क्लॉक वाइज मूवमेंट so the force f will produce a clockwise movement so clockwise movement is force multiply by the perpendicular distance from the pivot which is 20 and this is equal to the total anti clockwise movement which is 8 newton Times the distance of the eight newton fifty centimeter plus four newton. The distance of four newton is ten centimeter. So twenty F is equal to four hundred plus forty. Twenty F is equal to four hundred forty. F is equal to four hundred forty divided by twenty. Means it is twenty two newton. Twenty two newton is the right answer. So option C is the right one. Three children's toy X, Y, and Z are the same size and shape. They have weights at different positions inside, so that the position of the center of gravity of each toy is different. Which toy is the most stable and which toy is the least stable when balanced in the positions shown? So we know that lower the center of gravity, it brings more stability in the object. In toy X, the center of gravity is close to the baseline. It is the most stable toy. And in Z, we can see center of gravity is away from the baseline. It is least stable. So option B is right. The diagram shows the energy stored for a mobile phone and how the energy is transferred between stores. What describes how the chemical energy is transferred? Here it is a simple straightforward that electrical work done. A moving object is brought to rest by a resistive force of 50 newton over a distance of 5 meter. What is the work done by the force? Work done is equal to force times distance. Force is 50 and Distance is five. It is two fifty joules. Option D is right. Which two physical quantities must be used to calculate the power developed by student running up a flight of steps? Power. so power we calculate using the formula it is rate of work done means work done divided by time option d is right work done and the time taken only question number 13 a rectangular marble block has dimension 1 meter by 1 meter and 5 meter and weighs 125000 newton the marble block is stored with the long side resting on the ground as in diagram 1 what is the change in the pressure on the ground due to the block when the block is stored as in diagram 2 rather than diagram 1 so let's calculate the pressure p1 for diagram 1 so pressure is force per unit area force per unit area force is 1250 Zero 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 newton divided by area. Now the area of the block in diagram one will be what? The dimension multiplication of two length, this length and this length. So this is the longest side, five meter, and this is a square, means one by one. So area is five times one. It is equal to.
25,000 pascal or you can write newton per meter square because the unit for force is newton and meter square is the unit for area. So the unit for pressure will be newton per meter square. It is given here. 25,000 in newton per meter square in case 1. Now let's calculate for case 2. Force is the same. Pressure P2. Let's say this is P1. P2 force is same. 125000 divided by area. Now what will be the area in this case? The multiplication of two lengths. This side and this side. And this is 1 by 1 meter. The square 1 by 1. So again this is 1,25,000. Newton per meter square. Now the change in the pressure will be P2 minus P1. So if you subtract P2 minus P1, P2 minus P1 gives you 1 lakh Newton per meter square. So option B is right. Four students describe the phrase absolute zero during a lesson on the particle model. Which student is correct? Absolute zero option A is right. This is the lowest possible temperature. Okay. Next question. At the surface of the liquid, the more energetic molecule can escape from the liquid into the atmosphere. Which name is given to this process? It is evaporation. In evaporation, at the surface of the liquid, the molecule which have higher energy, they will leave the surface and escape from the liquid into the atmosphere. So evaporation is a surface phenomena. It can happen at any temperature while boiling is a bulk phenomena. It needs a particular temperature like the boiling temperature of water is 100 degrees centigrade. And Evaporation from the liquid, if the water is the liquid, it can happen at any temperature. Question number 16. A teacher puts some cold water in a test tube. She holds the bottom of the test tube while heating the top. The water at the top boils, but, the, but she continues to hold the test tube as the bottom remains cold. Which conclusion about water is made from this experiment? Now, she is able to hold. Why? Because the temperature at the bottom part does not rise. And why? Because water is a bad conductor of heat. So option A is right. Water is a bad conductor of heat. The diagram shows a wave. What are the amplitude and wavelength of the wave? Amplitude is 3 cm. This distance is the amplitude. And wavelength is crest to crest or peak to peak distance, 8 cm. So option B is right. A light ray strikes a plane mirror and is reflected. Which angle is always equal in size to the angle of reflection? So what happens when a light ray strikes a plane mirror? It's a polished surface, light incidence on the plane mirror. And then it is reflected back. This is a normal. This is an angle of incidence. This is the angle of reflection. We know angle I must be equal to angle R. Let's suppose this is point O. A O is the incident ray. O B is the reflected ray. And let's say this is O O dash. O O dash is the normal. Now read all the options. The angle between the incident ray and the mirror. No, this is not right. Option B says the angle between the incident ray and normal to the mirror. So between the incident ray and normal to the mirror is the angle of incidence. And angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So, and, so option B is right. Next question. The diagram shows two diverging rays of light passing through a lens and the emerging parallel to each other. Which label distance is the focal length of the lens? So 
so we know that the light rays passing through the focus of the convex lens will emerge out parallel to the principal axis so this point is a focus and focal length is the distance between focus and the lens so this distance is the focal length option b is right a beam of light consists of yellow and blue light the beam of light is incident on a glass prism which diagram is correct so when the light passes through a prism it is splits into several color and the pattern is vibrio red color light is least deviated light and violet is most deviated light and the pattern is somehow if you draw a light it will be red and then it is violet then the order of the spectrum v i b g y o r so here we can see that yellow light will be if you compare its deviation with blue blue will be most more deviated in compared to yellow light option d is right b and c are wrong In option A, the angle of deviation of yellow and blue is shown incorrect. Option D is right. So I hope you like the video, and we will upload soon for rest of the question. Keep watching, and please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much.